This castle, and we have another one in this direction, and there's a third one in this direction. This one, it's in a bad shape. That one is in the worst shape. <laughs> and that one. Also Templar? Yeah, yeah. Three, three in a row. Because there were seven castles. Um, so, welcome oh. to this first conference and um, um, <coughs> this first event that uh, uh, which uh, we, we begin uh, our uh, meeting this weekend and we'll do a um, um, very dynamic uh, uh, visit because there's no time and for some of you certainly it's too difficult to climb just to the top of the, the tower because uh, it's too high but for those who can't or want to do it it's nice okay um, this castle was built from from nothing, from rock, from the rock, by Gualdin Paes. Ah, yeah, the first, the first great, great master of Portuguese temple. Portuguese, not Portuguese. Sorry, you Spanish, but oh, she's actually uh, uh, she, she has a sword, and I know I, I'm just a second distance, but. Um, uh, because generally when we see some programs in the, in the History Channel and so on, it seems that there were uh, Spanish Templars and Portuguese Templars. Templars were not Spanish, nor Portuguese, nor French. Okay. They were Templars. Templar, okay? And inside the order there were some provinces. Mm -hmm. And Span, Spain, Castilla and Portugal and Galicia were inside, in Lyon, were inside the ninth, the ninth province of the Temple. Catalonia and Aragon did belong, belong to the Italian, ah, okay, Italian province. Okay, so when we speak about Portuguese Spanish Templars, it's wrong. There was not no <laughs> Portuguese or Spanish Templars. Okay, there were lots of people from Spain or Spanish or Portuguese working for the Templars, but there were no national Templars. So this is uh, the first mistake. Lots of people commit, but it's uh, it's like that. Uh, we we can. Uh, try to change this, but it's very difficult. <laughs> and uh, this province has to uh, add to uh, main strongholds that uh, existed in Portuguese territory. Tomar, it was the spiritual stronghold, and another one, Castelo Branco, uh, next to the border with Spain. Uh, at that time there was no Spain, at just on the border because there was no border yet okay so uh, the Templars received from the king of portugal a fantastic territory that went through spain almost till andalusia to the south um, and um, after that only and uh, during the reign of dennis the king dennis that transformed the templars in order of christ new templars nationalized the templars after that you can, you can speak about portuguese temples okay before you cannot uh, and this, this king, uh, helped by the Templars, decided to divide the, the border or to, to, to draw a border between Portugal and Castilla. And it was the first time this happened uh, and this was done in a place in the north of the, in the, next to the, the border uh, with Bragança, Alcaniz, it was a place, today it's, uh, it's nothing, even the, the, the castle almost doesn't exist. It's a, 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 it's a, a, big, a big city uh, of casinos and, uh, and brothels and things like that. But at, the, at the, those times it was a um, very important stronghold, Templar stronghold. Uh, but um, this um, great, great master, I call him great because he was very important, first very important great master in Portugal. Of the ninth province. Okay. Um, this great master was the first to build lots of fortresses and uh, uh, strongholds because before the temples had received castles and other places that were already built. The first to build like, uh, like this was him and he built several castles all along the country, not only in this region but along the country. Tomar was built by him also. And um, this castle, Cardiga Castle, Zezer Castle, 
uh, Dorne Castle, Castle, the seven castles, even one on the other side of the river, Pinheiro Castle. Uh, it was a, a kind of um, advanced post to see if there was someone coming. Because every of these towers, every of these castles communicate with this, each other with fire. Smoke signs, okay? So it could, every castle was visible to the others at that time. Not today, but at that time it, they were visible, intervisible. Uh, and this uh, was built uh, to uh, create a line of defense on the river, Tejo. It was at the border at that time, the south border of the, this, uh, this uh, territory, and uh, um, uh, next to Cardiga Castle there was uh, an old Roman road, if you go there you'll see the Roman road, so mm -hmm. it was a, a way to cross the river, an easy way to cross the river, so they built the castle just next to the road to <laughs> check everyone who crossed the road. Or across the river by, uh, in, in, into that world. And so uh, the, everything was built according to certain uh, defense plans, but not only. When we look for uh, Templar buildings, we must be, um, be prepared to be amazed. Because every Templar building is built according other ideas, not only defense, not only commerce, <coughs> not only material things. There, there is always something beyond matter. And they were, they were interested in matter. Uh, the first, the first uh, Grand Master, when the order was transformed in order of Christ, in the, in the rule, he, he writes, first of all, material things. Without material things, there are no spiritual ones. You see? With master. Look that. And so, um, this is very important. And so, Gualdim Paish uh, built those castles, and after that, he, um, he chose to, to um, entertain himself with other matters, with other subjects. And after that, he prepared, for example, uh, a big big thing that happened and no one knows, <laughs> almost no one knows. That was preventing the Qatars, people from Languedoc, it's also France, to be slaughtered. Okay? In 1208 and 9, thousands of Qatars were welcomed in Portuguese territory of the Templars. Building new villages and cities with the names of their own in the south of France. So we have a lot of places mm -hmm. in our territory now, even now, with the names of places that exist in the south of France, translated to Portuguese. Okay, but where did this big heresy begin? At Albi. Okay? So where Albi is in Portugal? The second stronghold of the Templars in the Iberia Peninsula, Castelo Branco. The natural people of Castelo Branco is called Albi Castelo Branco. See? So, this is a, a, just a, a note for you to understand that there are lots of things that we must rewrite and think about. These three castles in this region had another purpose since Gualdim Pai's time. They were the keepers of a big secret, or better, of two big secrets. First of, one, first, first of all, the secrets of the agnostic exercises, their secret doctrine, because these castles were lost in the, in the middle of nowhere, so they could work without any problem. This is the first one, and inside this castle, in the end, in the end of the 19th, uh, 19th century, were found 24 medals that uh, show that they are the secret doctrine. It's the only place in the world when we actually have material objects to show them. Proof, proof, material proof, okay? Uh, 24 of these, three of these medals, you can see them in the exhibition that uh, will open at 6. And those three uh, medals show, depict, a knight kneel, kneeling in one 
only knee. It's different from kneeling with the two, okay? Um, kneeling one before a lady and giving the lady a flower, a rose, and the lady puts the helmet on his head. This is a kind of mm -hmm. symbolic thing. We can speak about that in, a, in a, another <laughs> time, but it's very symbolic. Because this depicts not only <coughs> the purpose of kneeling before the soul of the knight, the knight himself kneeling before his soul, but also when the lady puts the helmet, this means something in the doctrine of the temple. To build a head, to build a head, it's what in Gnostic thinking means to be prepared to reach other worlds of consciousness and existence. Because this head, we think this head is the border of everything for us. It's not. Think of yourself as a phone, a phone, uh, a phone. Okay, we have inside the phone a device that keeps us in, in touch with everything we receive and we can phone others. Okay, we think that's everything the phone has. Now, there's a satellite. Without the satellite, you can phone no, nobody, nor receive phone nobody. It's what happens with us. We have a ship inside, our brain the ship, but we have a satellite. And only working or building a head, this is a symbolic way of telling this, only building a head, we can reach that reality. It's not building a mental world. It's building a head. What head means? You uh, you know that one of the great accusations against Templars was the Baphomet. Okay, Baphomet was an invention of, from 18th century, from a German guy called uh, Amir Pugstall. Okay, but before he he didn't invent nothing. He only tried to adapt things that he knew. pulled it out of his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he he adapted things he knew from other people before him. Um, the, the word Baphomet was invented by him. So when people speak about Baphomet and connect Baphomet with Templars, people are committing an anachronism because the word was not used in the 13th or 12th century or 14th century. Okay? So uh, it's an anachronism. Uh, but the second secret, this is the first. What the is the anachronism for? Anachronism is something out of his time. Okay? Something that we say about something out of his time. For example, when we speak about Templars, we, we must speak about them only till, till, till uh, the, the, the dismission of the, the Order, isn't it? The, the Order of Night Temple, <coughs> okay? The Templars exist till, till then. After that, it is, it is a different thing, okay? It's not uh, perhaps anymore Templar Order, it is Templary system. Okay, so if we, we speak about Templar Order, uh, after that, we are committing an anachronism because the, the times are not okay. not synchronized. Not synchronized. Yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. 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 Exactly. So it, this is the first mystery. The second mystery is even perhaps more uh, important because these castles were <coughs> put on this place because this place <coughs> is connected with water. Every of the three castles, water. and water. It's or it was not not now anymore, but it was a very good way of going somewhere. There was no highways. Okay, water, rivers. Till 19th century, before the dams that were built in River Tiger, mm -hmm. we could go from here to Toledo without mm -hmm. any problem in a caravel. Mm. See, not in a <laughs> rowing ship, in a caravel. So, everything changed, <coughs> and very quickly. So, what, what is this second mystery about? It's about being boats, building boats. The fam famous boats Portuguese had since 14th century were built in this region, in this 
places guarded by these three castles and above all by castles mm -hmm. from Caesar River. There's a Spanish document, a spy that came from Spain, that uh, writes to Spain saying that I saw more than a, a, a 100 ships being built. And it was not the right ships, as we figured, okay? Big ships. So, when we speak about ships, people generally uh, think Lisbon, the better now. And it was there that uh, John II began to build his, his ships, but before John II there were shipbuilding. And it was Templar, not the, from the crown. Okay? And this was the place where everything happened. The first discoverer, Portuguese discoverer, was the commander of this castle. So you can figure that what the queen said. Okay. Even he, sorry. What was his name? His name Gonçalo Velho. Gonçalo Velho. It was the discoverer of two islands of uh, Azores, Azores Island. Okay. Oh, yeah. It was the commander of this castle, uh, Almirol. Uh, under his command, the ships were built. So he once he, he decided, ah, okay, I'm building the ships. I'll try one, and he, he went away. Okay, and uh, because the, the, the river Tejo uh, had more water than now has, so the ships could. Uh, go and, and come very easily to what doesn't happen now. Or dif it's very difficult now to have a ship like a caravan, for example, uh, doing this. Um, but at that time it was not. And um, this, uh, this is, is nice because they were building the ships inside their territory with trees that came from inside this, uh, their territory with people that worked for them. Everything is secret. Okay, this is something we'll show in detail in one of our next exhibitions. Because it's completely new. Lots of books can be this. And so, in the garbage. Mas a quilha conseguiu-se tirar a quilha toda, a quilha toda foi feita. When Salazar did here a great dinner and offered here a great dinner to the to the ambassadors, uh, foreign ambassadors in Portugal, and uh, it was a great, great party in here with theatre, music, music, and so on. And so in that in that uh, time, they did some works to adapt the place to that uh, event. And so this wall perhaps disappears at that time. And on the wall, on these two walls, there was a chapel dedica dedicated to Our Lady of Amuro. Disappeared. We know nothing about this. So we know only that exists because there are documents that say on the walls that there's a chapel. So there's a there's a uh, there uh, um, an inscription. <laughs> and that is inscription would be a uh, normal inscription if we <laughs> didn't find a word there that changes all. <laughs> Volume five. Volume five. It's uh, identified as Lucifer. Okay, Lucifer. It's not Volume five. It's Lucifer. So Lucifer in Middle Ages was the name of the devil. Okay. So calling Volume Pipe Lucifer. This happens three times in three different castles. Not one time. The, here at Tomar twice. One of the inscriptions that uh, is in Tomar came from Pombal, mm -hmm. another castle. But in three castles there were an inscription where Guadalupe Pais was called Lucifer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Try to, to to see this in our first or in our first uh, catalog, the first exhibition that we published the inscription, and in, in my book about Almoro. Okay, because I do the same.
And uh, here you see the rest of their, their uh, houses. There was a door there, uh, the treason door, called the treason door. Uh, and um, there's no military memories connected to Amaral. The only memories connected to Amaral are legendary and those connected with those medals and the, the, those experiences, the Constitution experiences. So it's not nice. Uh, we can, we, we, before we knew that the medal is not we lack but here you can see another inscription by Wally Fyche. He, he liked very much to leave some traces of himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, some traces of himself. He, he used to, to tell his story in inscriptions that he left. <laughs> uh, in several in several uh, You see? Here? Magister, Magister Gualdinus Bracure, Bracara, que é Capo de Galécia, Ortus, Mestre Gualdinus de Braga, que é cabeça da Galiza, nascido, portanto, Gualdinus faz nascido em Braca, em Braca, que é cabeça da Galiza, não é? No, edificou este castelo, Amorel, com os seus irmãos. Gualdinus está, em design, you see, Portrait of himself, not a good portrait, but it's like a fine. Not only knowledge. We must address to that. Templars had some. Uh, main concerns, okay? We must be synchronized with their, with their main concerns and not with ours. Generally, we are concerned with ours. Our words are completely different.
to choose few objects, but strong objects to show. So perhaps it's better to go up and visit the exhibition. There's a library, uh, our library on the center of uh, Templar Interpretation of Home Rule. Uh, it's a, it's a, um, a specific and uh, specialized uh, library that is in progress as libraries, libraries must be always. And so, um, if you have some books written by someone of the present uh, here, and that uh, you would uh, like to give us and uh, uh, or sell us for being in the library, please tell us because we need to know that and we want to be as complete as possible uh, as library. Okay, so first of all, we'll guide you through the exhibition. You'll see two exhibitions in one. There's one exhibition that lasts forever and another one that's not uh, a lasting exhibition, it's a temporary one. Uh, and that temporary exhibition uh, is changed every six months. So we, we put this one uh, for you, uh, for this moment, for, for this event, for this first conference. And, um, we think that it will be nice because this is a kind of uh, common interest thing because everyone uh, and every temple or every uh, place in the world would um, have some impression, common impressions in certain days of the year. So, in the catalog, as you see, a rodel one means around the year. Okay? So, what we, what we want you to know is what impressions the temples had around the year. Mm. Okay? And so, the catalog shows that, and the division will, will give some advice about this, not the old year. Uh, you will uh, find in a catalog that I will speak about this uh, more information. Some information you must have kind of peel with you sometimes to relieve you from pain. <laughs> because some of the information that you will find here is not useful information. And I have uh, all patient as far as possible, if I can help in a certain way for the development to the standard of Templar, not to be in a membership. People can, must not be member, can be interested to lead because the history of Templars is quite <coughs> coetaneal. Same age, like the Crusades, the first, the thirteenth, and the beginning of the fourteenth century. But the order of the temple is not are not sometimes a big confusion. So first of all, I would like.
entrelazado a señora Marina Honorio y Gabriela, Gabriela Alexander y a Ciudad, a Ciudad de Consejo por los esfuerzos que le a nuestra reunión. Now a few words short in English. From now on, uh, the visit, as I've told you, has two parts. One part is the, the eternal exhibition, and the other one is the non-eternal exhibition, okay? The transitory exhibition. They were found inside Almoral Castle. The Temple of Almoral Castle. These are unique. This shows that the Temple Order had a secret document. Because, as you see, this depicts uh, a devotion for a lady by a knight. And the lady is not a woman, it's a soul. So the knight is presenting uh, respect to uh, the soul. And the soul is holding. <coughs> is at that's a phrase that means that we will be near tonight uh, with all the might that the university can can give. So these three medals are only three from 24. The center of the mar, the center of the mar is the church of Saint John the Baptist. Both in Paris, took the road measured from Saint John the Baptist to Charolles. There's the circumference, and you have seven places on the circumference. Okay, because Baltic Paris building the mar wanted to build a city that was a replica from the. It was uh, very, very, there was a great devotion in Portugal. There was a devotion to people. Yes, but in Portugal, we have even books written about it from old times. So, yeah. representada pelo mestre António Paris e pelo chanceler Luís de Matos e também a assinatura 
com a ordem soberana e militar do Templo de Jerusalém, sendo regente Nicolas Aimovici Aski. Um, agradecer a presença, nomeadamente, aqui do professor que me acompanha na Alegandra, os autarcas estão aqui presentes também, docentes, convidados, comunicação social, representantes das associações, deste Conselho e Coletividades e IPSS. E sinteticamente dizer-vos o que é qual foi o ato subsequente que vamos fazer. Para além da apresentação do catálogo do professor Manuel Gandra, vamos aqui, e há bocadinho questionavam sobre os três componentes específicos deste protocolo. Não tem a ver com a tornar Vila Nobrequinha como um lugar internacional de interesse cultural templário. E para isso importa de facto fixar anualmente um congresso internacional que vai aqui ocorrer até 2022, neste timing e neste planeamento estratégico que temos nesta temática. E para além também, uma recomendação e destino de ser bibliográfico com o objetivo de enriquecer o conhecimento sobre a causa da Ordem do Templo e da Ordem de Cristo. De facto, encorajar também alguns colecionadores, como temos, como vocês sabem, a nossa Biblioteca Templária, que vai ser alargada, devido a esta, a esta celebração deste protocolo, todo o primeiro andar do respectivo edificado vai ficar eh, subjacente ou determinado a esta temática e eh, o, o, o respectivo acervo bibliográfico poderá ser consultado eh, por toda a gente eh, eh, assim que o, queira, que o queira fazer em termos de conhecimento pela, pela sua influência e pela sua temática. Um, no fundo, foi, é, sinteticamente, é isto que está aqui em causa. Também, a própria Serviço de São Templário, como o, uma instituição à guarda de algum material ou de alguns objetos e também de alguma bibliografia e documentos. E, por último, vamos, vai ser aqui feito a oferta de uma réplica forjada, segundo as regras tradicionais, da espada do cruzado ou do freio de Dunhões símbolo do contexto histórico que pressionou o surgimento, no fundo, um, o nascer da Ordem do Templo. Configura de modo este ato que vamos celebrar aqui a fomentar a circulação do conhecimento, também um ato, no fundo, de boa vontade de empréstimo de peças específicas, possui grande elevado valor simbólico, e não só, e também em termos de património, e por último também a disponibilização ao público de uma coleção por temas e peças individuais em concreto. Sinteticamente é isto. Bem haja pela vossa presença. Queria passar ao professor Gandra, aqui ao meu lado, sem último, sem mas teria que dar aqui uma tradução daquele relato, nomeadamente o espião castelhano, que diz que na foz do rio César, na altura Zezer, o prior e os mestres mandam fazer galiotas de 60 remos, cada uma com o um masto de Santiago, e fazem-nas no rio Zezer, que é cerca de Punhete, entre comas, Constância, e entra no Tejo, este rio, a sete léguas de Santarém. Estão preparando a partida e vão partir com a rei. É isto ligando este caso templário que está já devidamente identificado e a sua localização, ligamos também com o achamento, no fundo, ou com a visibilidade de São João Batista com determinadas especificidades ou características. Mas para isso, passaria a, a, a palavra ao Sobranda, mais uma vez agradecendo aos ilustres convidados a sua presença e bem-ajam a todos e continuem, no fundo, a semear a cultura. Bem-ajam a todos. estava combinado, vamos agora proceder à apresentação do catálogo, eu vou tecer algumas considerações sobre o catálogo, sobre o guia, ou o roteiro da exposição, como aliás na capa surge, denominado, e vou tentar entreter-vos um pouco, eu já falarei em inglês, mas primeiro vou fazer esta introdução em português, I will speak in English, but I, I'll do an, an introduction in Portuguese for the Portuguese people here, um, to understand what will be our ou mais, uh, mais speech. Um, um, e então, na, 
faremos um, 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 um quando eu digo vou, vou tentar entreter-vos é, é mesmo para vos entreter porque as histórias acerca das, dos temas que, que eu vou referir são mesmo uh, de entretenimento geral porque se nós falarmos disto em público as pessoas dizem que somos doidos não é? portanto temos que falar disto em termos de entretenimento de outra maneira não será, não será fácil percebermos o que se passa portanto temos na exposição duas imagens muito fortes essas duas imagens são a imagem de São João Batista que está aqui presente um São João Batista completamente fora da caixa como se chama dizer revestido com uma pele de porco o que é perfeitamente inusitado, é o único caso conhecido. E, além disso, esta imagem foi encontrada no fundo do Rio Zezer. Alguém a abandonou lá, exatamente perto de Limeiras, o sítio do cais templário, ou do, do, do estaleiro templário. E tudo leva a crer que esta imagem seja proveniente da Igreja São João Batista, em Tomar. Porque aquela foi abandonada, talvez a pele de porco seja uma justificação para o caso. Agora, falarei, a partir de agora falarei em inglês, é só para terem esta noção. Depois, quando me referi a Santa Maria Madalena, também farei alguns, alguns comentários em português. So, this image you are seeing, it's St. John the Baptist, uh, and this image was found in the river, in the bed of the river Zezer, next to the castle, the temple castle of Zezer, and next to the place where the ships, uh, Templars used for the discoveries, uh, were built. Um, and uh, this image is completely out of the box because it seems uh, that uh, um, the, the sculpture um, didn't know, I certainly did, he didn't know, but it seems he didn't know how to um, depict St. John the Baptist. And so he decided to use a skin of, not a skin of, of sheep, but a skin of pig. That, that's completely awesome, because uh, the pig was uh, an impure, uh, it, and it is now uh, an impure animal, and so for, uh, for a Jew, as St. John the Baptist was, this was completely out of the box. But perhaps this has something to do with the foundation of Tomar by Gualdim Paj. Because according to the legend, Gualdim Paj founded Tomar and gave the name Tomar because people, when they were searching for the right place, met with a, with a pig, with a boar. Uh, and um, this is depicted uh, in the church of St. John the Baptist in, in, uh, at Tumart for three times. And the fourth would be the image that was put aside because uh, it was not very common to see St. John the Baptist uh, depicted like that. This is a, a very, very important image. The image you saw, it's not the original one. It's a replica because the people that owns this image do not let this image to get out from it, the church where it is. And so we decided to make a replica. That's very fine, very, very well. And, uh, um, but uh, even as a replica, it's uncommon. We generally do not see such an image. Because St. John the Baptist, there's, there's some rules about this, about iconography. Um, I, I will have uh, the pleasure to talk again about this uh, next Sunday uh, during my, my, my speech. But uh, there are some rules uh, about iconography and those rules cannot be broken because if they are broken there's no language to be, to be, uh, to be understood. And it is like that uh, always. There's always a language in images. There's no naive images. All naive are we that, that uh, um, um, think that images are naive. And so this is one of the most fantastic images I've seen in the last three or four years in Portugal. And I've, I've seen several very out of the box also in Brazil. But in Portugal, this is perhaps the most important I saw in the last years. And the other one has to do with uh, that uh, painting that shows Mary Magdalene, uh, whose devotion in Tomar and among Portuguese Templars was very profound. 
Um, and this painting you saw is a painting on uh, wood that belonged to the Sherola at Tomar and was lost uh, more than 100 years ago. It was lost, this was lost, it's uh, under commas, because, um, under brackets, because um, this image was not lost, was, was um, uh, dislocated, was, was put aside by, by people um, since the 19th century uh, and was kept in a place where um, now is generally uh, kept, um, that belongs to the mayor house of Tomar. Um, and this image is very important because uh, it shows Mary Magdalene um, uh, with some symbols that are connected with um, her story and um, her mission and um, her legend. Okay, this is okay. Uh, this one, this one. No, okay. Um, I, okay, I'll show you a normal, normal Saint John the Baptist for you to understand. A normal one. Okay, this is a normal one. There are three main characters uh, in the depiction of St. John the Baptist. The, this is running away. Running away. Sorry. Yeah. Um, this is the normal. Uh, you see the, the, <laughs> the ship skin, the ship, and a banner sometimes. Uh, the, uh, in this image, there's no banner, um, but he is the pig is uh, pointing, as you see, he's, he's pointing to the, to the ship in in the other in the, in his uh, left hand. But um, as you see here, this is the, the hunting of the bow of the, the boar at Tomar, and another one at Saint John the Baptist. You see, so Saint John the Baptist has also two great. Uh, two great, two big um, uh, paintings about the life of St. John the Baptist. Um, but why um, the Boer is there? The Boer is there because it's a kind of um, um, cover-up for uh, the story, the mythical story of Tomar. The mythical story of Tomar, as I've told you, um, is connected to the, the end of a boar, but the boar is also in the sky because the castle of Tomar depicts a constellation and this constellation has to do with the boar. Okay, so uh, everything is connected, everything is covered up by these legends and these images and so it's uh, difficult for um, uh, common people to understand this, but this is the language, the typical language Templars used to address one to the other and to keep secrets going on. Um, Tomar, it's a replica of the holy city of Jerusalem and was built like that by Gualdi Empire. When we'll go to Tomar, uh, in our visit next Sunday, I'll tell you more about this, so I won't speak about this anymore today, but uh, this is very important and uh, I can show you this image shows Tomar centered in the church of St. John the Baptist, number one, and uh, Gualdi Paish used the rope to measure the distance between St. John the Baptist one to number two, Cherola. That's a replica of the dome of the rock mosque in Jerusalem and traced a circumference and on the circumference there are say six more points so this is not this is not uh, for uh, this did this didn't happen for for a chance okay this was uh, was done uh, according to a plan and so uh, everything in Tumar is uh, and uh, all the very main buildings at Tomar were put in the place, in the right place, according to a plan. And 
the planner of this, or the man that planned this, was Waldo in Pais in the 12th century. Is what I call generally in Portuguese, o plano, o primeiro plano diretor municipal do país. It was exactly the first time there was a plan for building a city in Portugal. Um, about Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, there are lots of stories about Mary Magdalene, but um, most stories of Mary Magdalene are apocryphal. That means that they are not written in the Bible. Even the story that Mary Magdalene was a whore uh, is a, an apocryphal story, and it was the church that, that told that story for the first time. The church, till the 20th century, almost till the end of the 20th century, called Mary Magdalene a whore. Okay? Uh, it was Pope um, uh, John, uh, John Paul II that, that, that decided not to call her anymore a whore. But um, in the, uh, the Knight Templars uh, had a great devotion, as I've told you, um, for uh, Mary Magdalene. And this uh, painting um, we see in the exhibition came for their main temple, their, their central temple, their chief strong from their chief stronghold Tomar. Um, I, I can I can only in this moment uh, speak about because I I, I, I want I do not want to bother you. But I, I would give some little notes about the symbolism of this painting. The painting as as uh, you have seen has a frame all around with letters. There's a phrase in the in the in the frame, and these letters uh, show um, a verse from the Canticle of the Canticles. The text in Portuguese, I will tell you in Portuguese and I will try to translate it, is this. Encontrei aquilo que meu coração ama, segurei-o e não o lagarei. That means in, in English, if I can translate this well, I found the, that one that my heart loves. I, I kept him in my hands and I won't let him go. So this is what we read around the frame. Okay? What's more in the painting? That's a partridge, for example. Some animals. Okay? That's a partridge. That's a partridge. That's the rabbits, that's a robin in the silk in Portuguese, and that's several snails, some of them going up on a tree. Okay, every one of these animals has a meaning. They are not there for decoration. We historians of art used to tell this is decorative. There's nothing decorative in this, okay? And so, what does the robin there, who be the seal there? Okay, be the seal. Um, there's a story about this. And the, the, this painting is full of stories and legends. Be the seal was a bird that um, it's a premonition for the, the, the passion of Christ, because when Christ was uh, walking to, towards the Calvary, uh, uh, a robin came and took a spine from his crown. And it, when he took his spine, a spine from his crown, blood of Christ was split and then the, the robin got that red on the head. It's the story, and that's an apocryphal story, but it's the story, traditional story. And in Portugal this story was very wide known. Okay? So, this bird shows you know why it's important to know which bird it is, which animal it is, because it's only a bird, has nothing to do with symbolism. A bird is not symbolic, but a robin is, a chicken is, a ostrich is, a parrot is, okay? We must decipher whose animal it is 
on site. And this one uh, has to do with uh, the passion of Christ and this uh, kind of uh, good uh, action the bird they did. And so he, is, he was um, marked with the blood of Christ. So this bird being there means that Mary Magdalene is exactly keen on this subject the passion of Christ through the bird because the animals are trans translations of other ideas symbols are always translations of other symbols um, a symbol has always two, two parts the definition of a symbol is something that is broken in two parts and when it's needed we can fix again and both parts connect exactly that's the definition of a symbol so a symbol has always two parts I, should, I give you an example for example uh, even more modern one uh, the symbol of Apple computers okay it's people would say ah that's a, that's an apple no if it was an apple it was meaningless it's a, an apple with a bite you see two parts a, an apple and a bite and the apple we know that someone might <laughs> or have bitten the, the 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 apple some someone in our stories who who, who was adam and Eve. So it was at, at, in 1977 a great scene to have on one of those computers okay and the designer who drew that was more than two weeks trying to figure which symbol to use. But because before that symbol, the symbol Apple used was Newton with an apple on his head, <laughs> for example. Okay, completely different. So, um, the robin, the snail. Uh, the snail, it's a. Uh, it's, uh, we understand the meaning because the snail has a as a, a, a symbol of a, a spiral in it uh, a, a spiral in it and the spiral uh, of the snail and the, of some of those animals with this kind of spirals um, are connected with some canon geometric canons mm -hmm. uh, the the number of, of uh, Golden, the golden number or phi or so but this snail so has to do with something that is not from this world it keeps with him something that is not from this world that is from another world and he goes up on trees mm -hmm. so this idea of getting up 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 losing sight of this world and getting into another Okay. Another one. The, part, the partridge I, I showed you in the beginning. The partridge, the prodige, it's an animal that is very uh, easy to understand. Um, I must do some a note before. There was a um, tradition. A tradition. Uh, there's a tradition in iconography uh, that uh, spells like this. Art follows nature. Today this doesn't apply, almost. But in old times this applied every time. Uh, art uh, follows nature. So if we, know, if, if we know exactly what are the actions in nature, we can explain the meaning of the, the actions of the animals or objects depicted. For example, a snake doesn't um, eat their victims by the, 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 the feet. A snake always eats their victims by the head. When we see a head out of the snake mouth, that means something different from the normal. Okay? You understand this? It's why nature or art follows nature. So the partridge, it's an animal that generally goes on pairs. Mm -hmm. A 
female and a male. They gather for a life sometimes. This is nice because Mary Magdalene gather also for a life with Christ, one is told. And more, it's an animal that sometimes um, takes the eggs of other birds and try to um, warm them and to have babies, to have new animals that are not partridges. And as they are not partridges, if you look to nature, we'll understand this. As an author that studied this, Conrad Lawrence studied this kind of uh, uh, question, for example, um, when we look for this, we we'll understand that when a bird that a partridge gave birth from other species, urged the voice of his mother, goes away to his mother, doesn't want to be with a partridge anymore. Okay? And this, in the ideas of who painted this, this painting, uh, in the idea of, of who painted this painting, um, meant that Mary Magdalene knew exactly the voice of his mother, or her mother. Okay? So, even being called a whore, she knew exactly from where she came. Okay? Um, and um, she would rep respond, uh, respond to a mother. In, uh, in old times, uh, before Trent Council, uh, this would mean that she would follow the church. Okay? But it's not the only meaning of this. It's, these are just notes of reflection. Okay? And I kept for the end the most exquisite animal of all. When we speak about rabbits, for example, Easter rabbits, why there are rabbits in Easter? Connected with eggs, eggs and rabbits. Oh, okay. Generally, people who read that in, and hear that, general people say, ah, it's a symbol of fertility. Exactly. Easter has everything to do with fertility. Easter has nothing to do with fertility. Why there are rabbits in Easter time? So, to know, to decipher this, we must read a lot. And to read the authors that wrote about this in the time the paintings were made. Because they knew the story. The story is told by Marco Polo in his book of travels. Marco Polo one day, uh, with his guide, came to a Buddhist temple. And outside from the, the Buddhist temple there was a, a wall carved with lots of rabbits. And he didn't understand nothing about this wall. And he asked the guide, where well, this means? What this means? And the guide told him, ah, this is very nice and very simple to understand. For a Buddhist it was very simple to understand. And for you it will be also very simple to understand in the end. You see this rabbit here? Okay, this rabbit here is the same rabbit everywhere and in the end. And it was a very good rabbit. So good, so good, so good, that he gave his life for another rabbit. And Marco Polo, I can imagine, thought, wow, I know this story. In my land, there's someone who gave his life for another one. It's called Jesus Christ. And so, why the rabbit came to Easter time? Rabbit in Easter time is Buddha. Christianity and Buddhism together since the 14th century. Okay? It's why rabbits are connected with Easter time. You must read Marco Polo.
it's the only author that speaks about this. If one fails to read the right author, can <laughs> fail everything else. Okay, so these images, so simple images, animals, just animals, are full of meaning and can help us to understand the mission of St. Mary Magdalene and what the Templars thought about her mission and thought about the ways of expressing her mission and teaching to others in a non-exact and immediate form what the mission was. This is another form of secretive language. Perhaps you saw in the exhibition a book where the phrases and the, the letters were connected with numbers. So, there was no circuit. Perhaps you must look better. Because that text, it's a book with almost 700 pages, is all included. Okay? So, Templars had secrets. There are lots of foolish theories about this, I know, but there are also some good theories about this. We must keep in mind that this was done for us, for those who were um, poor, pure in heart and had some ideas about, um, about how to um, give mankind what mankind deserves, love, peace and understanding. And this is um, the work of many of the Portuguese Templars, uh, even if they were not general Templars, but were nationalized Templars inside the Order of Christ. Um, because this book, as others similar, was produced inside the Order by friars that lived inside the order and learned these inside the order so there were secrets inside the order if you read the the rule and the status of the the order of the temple you read phrase uh, in the in the in the ceremony of admission of a new member that tells you fool you do not know nothing about the inside of our order. Keep away. If you do not keep away now, you'll be lost forever. Because what you see is not what we are. Okay? Muito obrigado. em Vila Nova da Barquinha, pioneiro no que respeita à ordem do templo em Portugal, dotado de um conjunto muito relevante de recursos que incluem um espaço para exposições, auditório e biblioteca temática, entre outros. Com o foco primário muito uh, concreto no que se refere à ordem do templo em Portugal e à sua continuidade na ordem de Cristo, o âmbito de interesse cultural alarga sequer as expressões de raiz popular gravadas na arte, religiosidade e tradições desenvolvidas ao redor do tema templário, em todas as épocas, quer as expressões mais eruditas, literárias, institucionais, históricas e até fraternais e associativas que a saga da Ordem tem vindo a inspirar até aos nossos dias. Este campo alargado de intervenção assegura a perenidade da iniciativa nos anos vindouros e garante uma firme uh, ligação aos muitos milhões de entusiastas da temática templária ao redor do globo, como testemunham as múltiplas expressões deste fascínio, em crescendo nos últimos anos, em séries de canais de televisão como História, na Geográfica Geográfica, ou BBC, em novelas como as de Dan Brown, uh, Cotton Alone, Robin Young, e até em jogos que batem recordes de vendas como Assassin's Creed, da francesa Ubisoft. Neste contexto, a Ordem Soberana e Militar do Templo de Jerusalém Universal, o SMTHU, através do seu Conselho Magistral Internacional e do Grão Priorado Português, tem apoiado a divulgação internacional do CITA e das suas iniciativas, quer através do site de notícias líder mundial Templar Globe, de que é proprietária, quer pela promoção direta junto aos líderes de opinião e opinion makers de diversos ramos das várias ordens que encontram nos Templários a sua inspiração. 
Esta ação espontânea tem como objetivo incentivar o uso do CITA como lugar de estudo, discussão e partilha do conhecimento do que se refere à ordem do tempo, envolvendo as diversas nações onde os ramos da ordem estão presentes. Depois diz as partes. As partes são a Ordem Suprema Militar do Templo e a Ordem Militar Universal, que está aqui descrita, e a USMTJ, representada pelo regente Nicolai Movic. E a última parte é a Câmara Municipal da, 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 da Martinha. O âmbito. O âmbito é dividido em três componentes específicas. A iniciativa resulta da associação das duas ordens com o fim declarado da Nova Barquinha e o cita como um lugar internacional de interesse cultural templário. Sede um evento anual do tipo Congresso Internacional e recomendação de destino de acervos bibliográficos e objetos que possam enriquecer o cita como referência internacional incontornável sobre a ordem do tempo histórica e as suas influências culturais em todas as épocas. E, portanto, as três componentes são o arquivo e a biblioteca. Pretendemos é que, em todo o mundo, em todos os países onde há interesse pelos templários, e, e, e eles têm se muito mais para além da Europa, e onde existem organizações uh, que se filiam no espírito templário, pois que elas tenham um lugar onde possam uh, 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 guardar, colocar tudo, a, toda a investigação que fazem neste momento, todo o acervo que estão a criar. Uh, como sabem, com o tempo perdem-se toda uma série de coisas que se vão juntando, e poder ter um lugar que é designado como um lugar, a presença, um lugar onde podemos encontrar essa investigação, é fundamental. Uh, o segundo componente são as trocas culturais, é o facto, como já ouvimos, de ser possível haver exposições que aqui estão e objetos que aqui estão, que possam circular por outros lugares uh, do mundo, onde há centros idênticos a este. E o contrário, há colecionadores particulares que têm peças extremamente relevantes e que, com um protocolo desses, podem ser incentivados a trazer essas peças aqui, vir apresentar essas peças, e sabemos, por exemplo, que no mundo anglo-saxónico e particularmente americano, existem imensos colecionadores que têm peças que não são vistas por ninguém. Este tipo de protocolo pode ajudar-nos a trazê-las à luz do dia. E, finalmente, o Centro de Proteção Templário como um lugar onde podemos trazer os investigadores que estejam não ligados à ordem, como neste caso, para poder partilhar o seu conhecimento, as suas inquietudes, as suas últimas descobertas e ouvirmos uh, palavras como há pouco ouvimos, que não é nos deixaram inquietos. Agora quero voltar outra vez lá em cima e olhar para tudo aquilo que estava a ver e ver outra vez melhor. E é isto que fiz o recebeu com muito gosto e muito prazer. Tem sido um percurso uh, fantástico, trabalhoso, árduo, uh, junto do professor Manuel Gandra, conseguirmos trazer até à Barquinha esta, esta conferência, uh, montarmos estas exposições, mas também tem sido muito proveitoso para todos nós, para toda a equipa, e é isso que eu também queria deixar aqui, uma palavra de apreço a todos que tornaram que esta exposição fosse possível, que o CITA seja uma realidade e que o CITA seja uma afirmação de Vila Nova da Barquinha, quer na história, quer que fique na história do, dos templários, quer que se afirme também como território de paz, que se afirme aqui também como território de um acordo que vai permitir a Vila Nova da Barquinha ficar na história mundial e na história nacional. Por isso eu quero-vos agradecer a todos que tornaram isso possível e, acima de tudo, é com grande honra que vos recebemos na nossa casa. Sintam-se em casa. Esta também é a vossa casa. Obrigada. Todos que estão aqui conhecem bem o mundo. Amanhã discutiremos se é templário, se é o templário, se é o que é que ele é. E sabem muito bem das quantidades enormes de grupos. Googlem templários e vão aparecer 200 páginas, todos com gente diferente. O que estamos a fazer, como disse o mestre António, é contracorrente completamente muito corrente. Este é o mundo, o atual, da, da dispersão, da divisão, da, da, da separação de tudo. Nós estamos a fazer o contrário. Quer dizer, não há regentes, não há mestres, não importa o título de cada um, vamos trabalhar, vamos juntar -nos. À volta de uma fogueira, o que é que aconteceria? À volta de uma mesa de família, o que é que aconteceria? É isto que está a acontecer. Vamos ver. Vamos experimentar. Mas não vamos fazê-lo de forma desresponsabilizada. Vamos fazê-lo durante 
três anos para que os outros que são mais reticentes venham e percebam que não há aqui problema nenhum. A única coisa que pode acontecer é irem para casa chocados com estas coisas, tens o Manuel Gander, vão chocadíssimos com estas coisas todas. Mas é bom chocar as pessoas, é bom começarem a descobrir algumas realidades. Pois bem, desde que pusemos este desafio entre nós, que são dois grupos distintos, como já foi dito, dois dos maiores grupos que há no mundo, de nos reunirmos aqui e agora lançar este lugar, desde então um outro grupo representado por Francisco, Uh, se juntou e disse, mas eu acho isso uma belíssima ideia. E para poder começar já essa ideia de podermos levar objetos, livros, etc., eu ofereço uma réplica da espada de Golfo de Milhões, feita por um artesão à séria. Ele vem de Toledo e vai-nos explicar o que é que é isto. Está feita por a artesanía antigua, por água de água, fogo e martillo. Só quedam cinco personas en el mundo que trabajan esta espada. Conseguimos las medidas de la espada que hay, que tiene en posesión el patriarca de Jerusalén y los hermanos eh, nos han hecho la réplica que hay en Jerusalén, que la tiene el patriarcado de Jerusalén. Y en nombre de todos los hermanos de Toledo, mano un magisterio, se entrega para al museo pues al, 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 al. Sí, 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 sí. templario eh, y el documento que se han hecho artesanalmente por los hermanos con sello y firma de los artesanos Sciences in Argentina. It was a feast, and the Archbishop Jose Borges, Pope Francis, invited another, it was another gentleman from South Korea, and me from abroad. And so we, I have a certain contact. I would like to offer to This is a personal gift. The Vatican gives from time to time some medals. On the one side, it is written Civitas Vaticana Trinitas. On the other side, You see the center Jesus, and on the front it is written, non nobis domine, non nobis, the domini tua da gloria. This is a piece of collection. It is numerated. It has a non number in the Vatican register. And I offer it to you personally. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
with these two beautiful ladies. Well, you know. So I'm not in Colombia. <laughs> 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 so, 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 well, well. <laughs> as I said before, we like have to be recognizant that it gives them all consideration. And I give you this place. Então, muito boa noite a todos. A continuação deste espírito ecumérico que é fundamental nos dias de hoje, mais do que nunca. E amanhã cá estaremos para a abertura, às 9 horas da manhã, para esta conferência que queremos, de facto, que seja uma partilha, uma vivência, essencialmente no ideal templar. Muito boa noite a todos.